everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing our second hot take and that is going to be on the new Free Fly Ember slow-mo cam. All right, let's talk about this new camera. I, for one, super pumped on this thing. Uh, images I've seen are really great. The stuff we've got here in the shop looks really good so far as well. Uh, gonna go over some pros and cons, kind of talk you through this camera, and let you know we have one for rent now. So, first up is price. This thing retails around $18,000. You really don't need to add a whole lot to it. A monitor, maybe some accessories. From there, depending on the monitor you get, really you could probably deck this thing out for less than a thousand bucks. Now, we've got this mounted with uh, Freefly's little uh, V-mount plate that goes on the back that's very small. Keeps this thing very lightweight. And the sensor on this is a five x four Super 35 sensor. Uh, it is a 5K resolution sensor, uh, does frame rates in 5K and 4K, so you get a couple options there. The really nice thing about this sensor is you can really just go into the options and dial in your specs for your vertical and horizontal and get different frame rates based on that. So if you wanna shoot 5K, you actually can shoot 5K at 1,011 frames a second. If you go down to something like a 266 to one aspect ratio, which isn't bad at all. Now, this camera here, boom, boom. Locking E-mount. Really cool, you can adapt almost anything to this and there's a wide variety of E-mount lenses for this already. Big thing here, no electronics. So if you have E-mount lenses and you're looking for autofocus or looking for iris control, manual lenses only and that includes iris. Now, let's talk about some ins and outs. Doesn't have what I would call the standard ins and outs uh, for this price point, but for this kind of camera at this price point, it's kind of bananas anyway, so let a few things slide. But if you wanna output your signal to a monitor, it is HDMI only, and there is only one of those ports. From here, there is uh, a power port that they include a PTAP cable to this, um, but only one there. There's also an ethernet port and a USB-C port for getting footage and doing some other connections there. Now, the crazy thing about this camera is this shoots 5K up to 1,000 frames a second and it weighs 1.75 pounds or 820 grams. That is absurd. If you've ever worked with a Flex 4K, you know how heavy a camera like that can be. The fact that this camera is this size offers up all sorts of new possibilities with things like FPV, gimbal work, uh, you know, imagine you're scaling a side of a mountain shooting uh, rock climbers. This is all you need with a little battery on here and a monitor to scale up a mountain and shoot some really bonkers stuff. So, also if you're doing some wildlife, it is way easier to pack this in your backpack than it is a Flex 4K. Now, the other really nice thing about this camera is that all the media is internal. It has a built-in four terabyte drive and shoots Apple ProRes uh, 422 10 bit internally. So when you fill it up, you take off what you need and then you're done. So just in our test footage, it's worth noting, we did use a wooden camera E to PL mount adapter and we put on our Schneider Cine Xenar 3s as well as ran some anamorphic modes on the Atlas Orion. So that's what you'll be seeing during our test footage, so keep that in mind. If you're used to the Flex 4K or the Veo or some of the other ones, you need software and operators and it's kind of a complex situation, this is just straight out of the camera, you're ready to go. Now, there isn't a log curve on this camera. They do have something as a baked in 709 or a hybrid log gamma setting that gives you a little bit more latitude. But all in all, with this camera, when you're shooting, just protect the highlights and you'll be very surprised at how good the footage looks. There's a lot you can do with the shadows here that we'll show you, but highlights tend to clip pretty easily. The thing I would recommend would be no matter what lens you're using, using something like a Digicon one half or a one, just to lower the contrast and spread that out just a little bit more. The overall operation of this camera is super easy. There's a couple toggle buttons here. It's pretty much a scroll wheel, select and record. Everything you can do is right there and it's very easy and quick to get to all the base layer settings, which there aren't that many, which is really great. So it's very easy to navigate. Also, there's an accompanying app for iPhone, uh, iOS, that 
allows you to go through and control and do playback and monitor and things like that, which is actually a really nice thing on this as well. If you're, let's say, on an FPV and you wanna control it nearby, run, stop from somewhere else, or you know, you're on the outside of a car, a lot of things you can do with that app that are really cool. The other really cool thing about this camera is because you don't need software and operator, all this other stuff, this camera is now a camera that you can use for an entire shoot if you choose. You just go to 2398 or 24 frames a second and shoot this like any other camera. When you get to your slow-mo stuff, put it in a slow-mo mode. It's actually really nice that it's no longer just a specialized unit. You could, if you wanted to, shoot whatever you want with this and not worry about buffer speed or reader writing and this and that and the other thing. Uh, just very easy in general to work with, which is very, very cool. Okay, let's talk about audio. If you are wanting to run this as a normal camera, at the moment there is not audio built into the camera, but there are things for headphones and a built-in mic that we're told will be operational later, which would be really nice if you are wanting a scratch track with this on something that you are trying to do sync sound with. Okay, let's talk about the price because this is where things get really interesting. For this camera here, 18,000 bucks. And you don't need a whole lot more to get it up and running. So when you factor in not having an operator or software or other things, this camera becomes really, really cheap and affordable for what you can do with it and for the rental rate in general. I think here we're gonna be asking around 650 bucks a day for the camera plus a monitor and kind of a whole setup with rods and rails and all of that stuff. So, a lot you can do at 650 bucks a day versus say 2,500 a day plus an operator cost for something like a Flex 4K. It's really cool that Freefly has made a camera like this um, for the price point, because this offers up a lot of creative capabilities that weren't there before. And if I didn't mention it before, the shutter on this is a global shutter as well. So you are gonna be getting whatever your action scenes are, you can go into it knowing that this global shutter is gonna work very, very well, and the images look great. One thing to note, if you are rolling high speed on this camera, the fans do kick on and go pretty loud, which, you know, might be a little tough in some environments, but if you're shooting slow-mo and you're not doing sync sound anyway, who cares? Uh, they're not that loud and just keeps the camera cool. Okay, let's just do a really quick overview of the frame rates. Uh, this does do 1000 in 5K uh, and 4K in kind of widescreen formats, but let's say you just wanna shoot 16 by nine. If you wanna shoot full 16 by nine in 5K, you're gonna get 600 frames a second and you're gonna get 800 frames a second at 4K in 16 by nine as well. Now. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, light. This camera's native ISO is 300 and there's options for 200 or 400 internally. Uh, it's a pretty low uh, on the ISO range, but that's there to keep your blacks clean and keep your shadows under control. So that being said, if you are doing shoots, you will need a good amount of light if you are trying to hit that thousand frame per second. So, you know, think bright daylight, um, if you are in a studio, some larger lights, 1200Ds, 600Ds, tungsten fixtures, um, you know, depending on how wide you're trying to shoot, you will need a good amount of light to accompany the camera. The nice thing is, now that this is only 650 bucks a day to rent, instead of maybe 3000 a day for a Phantom, you can afford all those fancy lights without bankrupting your production. All right, everybody, thanks for watching our hot take on the Freefly Ember Super 35. This is now available here at our shop, Northwest Camera Co. So if you are in the greater Northwest and wanna try this out until October 31st of 2023, if you use the code EMBER15, we will take 15% off of your rental rate. We wanna see people getting this in their hands and shooting some super cool stuff with it. So with that, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the overview. Remember, like, subscribe. Always like putting out this content for you. So if you do get a chance and this is available in your town, go try this out. This thing is bonkers. And I can't wait as a DP myself to go take this out and open up some things that I previously hadn't had access to without having a lot of money. So with that, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.